Hello, everyone, and welcome to Answer the Call. We're doing another early edition of Answer the Call. It's 7.39 in the morning, Eastern Time. Um, personally, it's just the last day of New World. I really want to enjoy New World. I want to spend some time with my family today. So I'm doing it a little bit early. So if you typically join uh, Answer the Call at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, um, yeah, we're doing it a little bit earlier today. At some point, I'd really like to do one later. Um, I just don't know how. Maybe I'll get a more like Eastern time guest for Star Citizen and do like an evening podcast one day. I've been on evening podcasts. Why couldn't I do one at some point? So uh, eventually I'd, I'd love to do that. I uh, just need to get my schedule down a little bit more. But the topic today is will 315 be fun or frustrating? I think we're going to focus mostly on uh, medical, the downstates, the losing your items, the looting, I guess looting in the sense that your items stay on your body when you die, uh, a wipe, whether or not a wipe is, is possible. We're going to kind of touch on those topics. Now, the thing that I'm really going to, the hill that I'm going to die on is this. A lot of players, for me, and, and I'm noticing people saying, specifically, I think it's too early because there's too many bugs in Star Citizen that we die to. I think there are two main bugs that we die to in Star Citizen that absolutely need to be addressed. I am not ignoring them. They matter more than anything, and they've been incredibly frustrating. You use the med pen, boom. It doesn't do anything when you need it to, and you're bleeding out. I think we bleed, bleed out too quickly, and I think we uh, the med pen doesn't work consistently enough. And I don't know why it's possible in 315 that that has been addressed but we don't know. Okay? That's number one issue that I've died from. Bleeding out too quickly, med pen doesn't work. The second issue is when shifting between from EVA into a ship and out, the, the swap of physics grids, something happens, some the game thinks you've collided with something and you die. Something like that. They always blame that stuff on the servers. I don't know how they're going to fix that. That is, I think, one of the main, like, insta-death weird scenarios that happen in the game, and I don't know are resolvable, okay? That will be frustrating. That will be a thing. I don't think it's resolvable until the server tick rate is better, possibly, because that's what they seem to blame it on. Besides that, I think most of the bugs that we die to are like, I got stuck in collision, I got stuck here, um, I... It mostly you got stuck and there was something like, I am in a position where I can't do anything. I have not heard of this happening yet. And if it's possible, they need to do it immediately before 315 comes in, I feel, is an unstuck button. Every game I've ever played has an unstuck button. Any MMO, any place that's open world. Oh man, I'm stuck in this thing. Unstuck my character. Uh, there's a couple of game developers in the chat. We talked about like the implementation <clears throat> and w could it, could it be exploited? They said, just teleport them back to a path they've already traveled to and it's fine. So it doesn't seem like it can be a major exploit. It doesn't seem like it's a way you can clip into ships. If they do it that way, why don't we have that? And the it's an alpha argument is exactly the reason why it should be in there. Uh, so you can continue testing and you don't have to backspace and things like that. The It's an alpha is not the excuse for dealing with incredibly game-breaking bugs all the time. It's creating a workaround so you can continue to test and provide feedback on the game. So that's how I feel. I feel like if that comes in, the issues to medical gameplay are more about the actual issues with the game rather than the issues with the bugs that caused you to die. So the issues with the game, I would argue, are it's not going to be very fun because you dying, you're not going to have that heart-pounding moment of, oh my goodness, I'm in combat right now. I'm going to die and lose my awesome gun. Because there are no awesome guns. They're all the same, basically. There is no awesome armor. They're all the same, basically. There, there isn't really anything that you would risk losing. There's nothing that is hard to work for and earn that has the ability to be lost. So it's more just like, oh, I have to go buy more med pens or, oh, man, I need to buy another medical gun. How annoying. 
So I think it's going to be more frustrating from that aspect. But without further ado, I don't think you guys want to hear what I think as much. Plus, I'm sure I'll insert my opinions into whatever uh, discussion we're having with the other people in the call. So we have four callers currently. I'll probably open it to about one or two more. And uh, yeah, let's bring in our first caller, the Doc. Doc, what's up, dude? Hello. Hello. So, Star Citizen 315, do you think it will be more frustrating and or more fun? And what what uh, what reasons why or why not? But before you go, um, we did just get a subscriber. I, I just want to say, guys, during the podcast, we do not... Uh, you know, have alerts play. I don't stop and thank subscribers and stuff like that. So if you guys are subscribing, if you are uh, chatting or uh, anything like that, don't think I don't appreciate it. I really do. Um, but I just, it's the podcast. So we usually don't try to have any interruptions. So thank you very much from the start till the end. If you did, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Doc, go ahead, buddy. I'm sorry. I don't think it'll be um, any more fun. Um, Because obviously they say, it's like issues as well. It's like mm -hmm. how we die as well. Um, but I don't think it'll be any more frustrating as well. Um, I think overall it would be interesting to see how it works. Yeah. Because um, they haven't shown anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and like inventory as well. Uh, that'll be like a huge change to how the game works. Yeah. I think it's um, a huge change in the way, like the mechanics of the game, but I don't necessarily yeah. think that 315 the, is a game changer in terms of the amount of hours we might put into the game or, uh, no, I don't think so. You know, the I level of fun it, it will be. Yeah. I think, it, I think oh, it's really yeah. good groundwork though, right? For the possibility. Yeah, yeah. But they actually have to do that groundwork uh, to make, items matter give more purpose to players and things like that yeah. there's there's a, so many moving parts and it's gonna be some time before the medical gameplay impacts that level i feel like yeah um what do you think about the the unstuck feature or whatever and and like what what do you typically die to is is kind of what i want to ask people i think it's more um like just jumping onto something and I die. It's just like out of nowhere, I die. Mm -hmm. So I just jump out of, I could jump onto something and I die. Do you mostly nowhere. play as a solo player? Uh, sometimes I do. How, what percentage so, do you think you play solo versus with others? I think it's split like evenly. Okay. I would say. Um, I ask that because of the down state, obviously. If you go down yeah. and your friend isn't, they can get you up, and it's less frustrating. So that's a, another factor yeah, as well, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think if in, like, a team, um, and if someone dies now, it's so awkward. It's, like, frustrating. Mm -hmm. Like, now, like, in the future, it's like, oh, I can help you now, and it's all, you know, keep like head up again and you know finish off but um i think if you're so uh, like it'll be harder yeah because of how we spawn as well yeah i mean you're you're gonna lose your gear sometimes i feel like when you're a solo player more often and i think yeah i, I did not read the and i probably should have the reddit threads on this but uh my chat told me that you know they were pretty pretty up in arms about the changes, and I think oh, yeah. that's yeah. probably yeah, the reasons why. Is is I think most players are solo players in the Star Citizen community at the moment. Yeah, um, it's not going to be. It's not going to be more fun. I think it's going to be like oh, I have to get more med pens. I have to buy more yeah. ammo. I have to do this. Blah blah blah. Oh, it's so annoying. Yeah, but the, the to yeah, get all this stuff. So I, I don't know. Like, I, I understand where they're coming from. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. That's not hard to understand. Cause yeah. You have to put this stuff in like now and not later. But I also um, understand that like. 
dying has to have consequence. Like they have to respect yeah, that as well, so. right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. As far as like where else can we go here, is do you think the medical gameplay is going to be enjoyable? Do do you think it's uh, it's obviously tier zero? You you've watched ISC this week, I assume, right? What did you think? What did you think about the the information they provided there with the different symptoms and the different ways to cure them? What do we think about the Cutlass Red being almost meaningless? Oh, red. You know, oh, so. that would be so hilarious in three fifteen when people are like, oh no, the ship I can't. You know, how much was that ship? Like a hundred and seventy five dollars. Uh, let me Google it. <laughs> no, I think it was like one forty five. It's like, oh my god. So it's it's a. Uh, that was a, a pretty fun fun tidbit. I think we kn we've known that it's going to be less useful for a while and, and known it was going to be significantly less useful, but not being able to spawn in it, it only being able to heal minor, minor injuries is like, whoa. It's 135. 135? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's pretty <laughs> gonna be interesting. Yep. Um, I don't know. Is there anything you want to want to add or anything specifically you'd like to talk about um inventory as well for 315 the, okay by, by the start of inventory i think that'll be interesting in what way um like how we store things how much can we have on our person like like on our ships etc um mm -hmm. or like what happens um, if you die and you have an item on you? That'll be interesting to see how they um, explain that one. Oh, you have to go back and get it. Yeah. But um, what happens when the item has no meaning and doesn't cost anything and yeah. you're just going to replace it anyway? I mean, I think that's the problem here is they're trying to create meaning for death, but they haven't but created no, meaning for the items yeah, no that for items punish you for get. death. Yeah. So, that has to be the next step, and it won't be. Yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> which is the most frustrating be. thing. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, Doc. I guess it sounds like we're uh, towards the end. I don't know. Um, actually, um, the um, Ooh. ASA stuff. That's quite the um the what stuff? thing at the moment. The um. I guess say ship stuff with that concept. Apparently, it's not like oh, find enough. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, to give some some clarity to this in case people don't know, some advertising board in the UK uh get, sent an advisory notice to CIG saying that they are not clear enough that their uh my headphones are dying they're not clear enough that the they're labeling concept ships as concept ships clearly enough in their advertising uh because i think somebody sued them or made a complaint or something like that and uh then they just put a disclaimer in and it was kind of over i don't personally think it's that big of a deal I think people will it's jump not, on to be honest. jump on the bandwagon just, of yeah. of like trying to take down CIG left and right. Um, yeah, people because, just um, yeah. taking this way way out of um, scale. Yeah, and um, like all it is was just like a verbal warning high school. Yeah, for, like anyone in England, like if you're an asshole and the like teacher was like, "Hey, stop that!" You know. Yeah, that's all it was. And people are just like, oh, it's all this happening. It's like, no, it's not. It's just a simple... Star hey, Citizen in that. legal trouble? Oh, no. <laughs> in legal trouble. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't... I I agree, but I also think that's pretty off topic for, for today's podcast as well, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting to touch on, but... It definitely is. All yeah. Because... But it, it it's also not because it's just the same thing of every news agency trying to jump yeah. on the bad wagon of being Which like Star Citizen news... is a scam. Yeah. 
So, yeah. But meanwhile, they're adding medical gameplay and trying to improve the game while simultaneously not improving it at the same time. Which is frustrating. It is frustrating indeed. Yep. Well, all right, Doc, we'll let you go, bud. And we'll bring in our next caller. So thank you very much as always. And hopefully 315 is a bit more fun and you and I uh, start playing again on the weekends. Touch wood. All right, buddy. Talk to you. Bye-bye. All right, our next caller is Virgil. Yo, Virgil, what's up? Hey, how are you? I am uh, well. How are you? Good. And the mic's good? The mic's good? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, What do you want to start with? Ooh, probably just the title. Like, will 315 be fun or frustrating? Um, I guess we can just start right there, right? Yeah. Um, I should really I, call I, it, say, more fun or frustrating, I feel. <laughs> because I think it will be frustrating. It's an alpha, right? It'll obviously be frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, for, for me, it's like... Um, I, I think the question with every patch and, like, it, is that I find that the fun tends to not be in the patch notes. And yes. I mean this in the sense that, like... They always sneak in some sometimes some like um some small gameplay changes or something like that that'll go below the radar and not be significant enough as as a feature, but it will actually make a patch more enjoyable. And I think like the questions I have for the next patch on to answer the the theme of your podcast today is gonna be dependent on what's not in there. Like I'm definitely looking forward to, and I'm going to be like arguing kind of, or sorry, debating for the stuff coming in, but I got like big question marks and like, what's trading going to look like next patch? Um, you know, what's jump town going to look like next patch? Um, how are the dynamic events going to progress next patch? That kind of stuff. Um, and then how is that going to tie into the features that we're about to get? Did um, you read the AMA like- about dynamic events? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Luke in there, and it's funny he mentioned. I, I know you're you're probably going to the PvP part of this for Xena. Is that where you're heading? No. Uh, you you specifically brought up Jump Town and the um, the cargo, and and it seems to mm-hmm. be addressed, and and to oh su- sufficiently to for me in that. Yes. Go, can you tell me what that was? Maybe I missed that reply. Yeah. So in for Nine Tails Lockdown. In Evo, yep. I don't know if this is feedback from the community or what, but they said that the uh, they deprioritized the trading, um, well, let's call them mods that they put on the trading terminals for yep. for the medical supplies mm-hmm. because they wanted to push you to the wrecks. Mm-hmm. The so do you know the dude that has explained Nine Tails Lockdown? He's in the gray room and he kind of has the part in the middle of his hair. I can't remember his name. He seems like a younger guy. He's the guy who said we don't want to break the economy. Oh yeah, yeah. I believe this is the guy that responded to that. Okay, he still he okay, still yep. even made that silly comment again in in this post. I believe. Yeah, ugh. but that, that he, one hurt. That one hurt. It hurts, <laughs> it but this really guy. Did. But I like this guy. I really do. I think he's he he mm-hmm. is good. He just that was a little blunder, right? But the yeah. he he mentioned how he immediately brought that conversation back up again, and that in three fifteen he implied that there'll be nine tails locked down again, and those uh balance changes will be returned back to the game so you will be able to purchase more medical supplies the shops will buy more medical supplies and the same mm-hmm. thing will be applied to jump town and in mm-hmm. order to deal with the issues of the medical or the uh trading thing just being completely stupid and broken jump town mm-hmm. is going to create actual physical boxes there instead of yeah. you purchasing from a terminal and whoever's standing on the terminal is the one who gets it first. Yep. It's an actual yeah, fight over something. Yeah, that's awesome. Something that's like physical. a really good thing. Yeah. 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 No, I'm like I'm all about that too because the jump town loop doesn't just belong to like spaceships, right? And some guy clicking a terminal. Yeah. And um and we kind of almost had that. I remember like right when um the moons around Art Corp got delivered and then we got I forgot what a 
Pacheco mission, I think it was Pacheco or yeah, something. Yeah, Pacheco. And she had the drug lab, and you went down, and then you could try and run away with the. There the was drugs, a counter but mission. They weren't worth anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like there was almost the only reason that that kind of didn't become like a lesser, more frequent version of Jump Town is this: it wasn't meta to do it. Like an hour worth of carrying the drugs up into your cutlass you know, ended up being like 50,000 UEC or something. So it's just the price tag that it makes sense, um, which is like the frustrations with the economy, right? Is like, mm -hmm. you know, what it doesn't require any sacrifice or any hard work really tends to be a huge payout. And then, you know, when you do actually risk some of your own um, to try and make money on a loop or something, you're not getting the reward you should be. And that's the thing too, is like, is there going to be balancing to that? Um, you know, do, does the trading economy, I know it doesn't exist right now, but does the trading economy change shape next patch with the wipe? And we could talk about that a little soon, but like, yeah, it's a lot of the stuff that isn't in the loops. And um, I really hope that they do that. They also mentioned for the record, um, like Xeno being able to participate for Xeno threat, like choose They'd that like side to. of the coin. And yeah, he, yeah. They he, sorry, start... he didn't say officially, he just was yeah. pushing for it internally, but yeah, like. Not that they're doing that, but I just thought that was like interesting because I remember Luke mentioned it one time early Xeno development and got a lot of slack from the PvP community about that. And yeah, I just thought I, I I don't know I just appreciated that I think. Um, but All right. Either Bef way, oh uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 you go, you go. I was changing the topic, so I want you to finish. Yeah. No, that's that's what I was doing. Oh, so okay, okay. Then next? before we change the topic, I want to ask everybody, um, how how. Do you play solo or do you play with others? And how often? And when you die to a bug, what is it typically? Sorry, is this for me or chat? Yeah, you. Sorry, <laughs> I thought the you were podcast. Talking to chat. I'm talking to no. you. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. No, um, for me, I'm always with the group. Like, I mean, oh, there's now and then I'll go by myself. Um, but like, I'm always usually with friends and I got to say like the only time, like, I don't even like I'll die in PVP if like a server hitches or something, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't experience these issues other people are, are getting like, it's not nearly that big a deal for me. I think like now and then I'll get my legs orange or whatever, because like I tried to jump off the second story at Grimhex to get to the elevator, mm -hmm. but that's like it. Like I really don't experience bug deaths outside of like a server hitch in a ship but that's it like and i i like to think i play the game a lot so i don't know if other people are experiencing that issue i'd be curious what it is like and you know i i know when i would jump onto like eva into a ship or something like usually i was going 100 miles an hour into it anyway um, and I probably should have slowed down. And that's the problem too, right? Is a lot of people play so carelessly and recklessly because there's no consequence to dying. True. So, you know, like, for example, me, like, you know, I, instead of going down the staircase, I just jump off it. Like I've never gone downstairs my entire time playing this game. So I don't know. I don't, I don't see the frustrations. I, I'm sure they're there, but, um, I just haven't seen them. That's all. But for me, like the medical gameplay, you know, is it too early is, is the big question, right? And for me, man, I don't like I'm I'm getting to the point. I'm three years into the game for me. I've been a backer for three years now. Rookie, and I'm dude. like worn down. Like, and we're coming up to Rookie a numbers. Decade. I know, right? And I'm I'm we're coming up to a decade and you know, like trading has been fun in the past and we've had 30Ks. You know, I, I just think they got to do this kind of stuff because if not, we're always going to be stuck here in limbo with, it's, it's not like the same forward, argument, like just getting more ships. Like, oh man, do yeah. I need, uh, should I buy this graphics card? And then somebody goes, well, the 4,000 series is coming out soon. So you might as well wait for yeah. that. And then, then you're thinking about getting the four, well, the 5,000 series is coming out. Exactly. You know, it, it's like, dude, they need to do something. Like what? Yep. There's you can't argue against them do like doing something. If you don't like it, don't play. Like it's it just it yep. just is kind of what it comes down to. They need to do something. So will it be fun or frustrating? Like that's a topic for people who want to play the game. Yeah, and that's and, an alpha, right? Like it's supposed to be frustrating. Like it's 
it's not all the way built. So you have to tackle these issues at some point. Like, and if this means that them introducing like meaningful death in game means that they're going to finally start paying closer attention to, you know, dumb deaths and, you know, like taking damage, going down staircases and something. So be it like, let them balance it, let them tweak it. You know, you've got to consume the vegetables at some point because yeah, I, I'm just, and I know you're on the same page with me with this is like, I'm just so desperate to start feeling like a game, you know? Yeah. And I, I no in no game that I play is like death meaningless. Like it's always an inconvenience and you know, it's good timing, I think. And I just think it's like, if people are saying, oh, 30 Ks and stuff like that, then it, like that argument's never going to go away. I can't think of like, and they're reducing 30 Ks even now. Like I, they're saying that they have the, like the record lowest 30 Ks they've had in the whole development. And they've found ways to keep servers up for much longer. And it just means that there's probably going to be more polishing in the PTU phase. Maybe they extend it out because now they have to cover a wider range of bugs considering deaths. But no, I think it's, it's, oh, I can't look at chat. I think it's time yeah, to, don't. it's time. <laughs> I already see the kick W's. I think yep. it's time to just commit and, you know, start, yeah, start consuming the vegetables and, you know, start seeing what this game's supposed to be rather than just to ship every patch and, you know, push and pull trolleys or something like that. Yeah. It finally feels like a huge leap towards what we're actually all supposed to be playing. Um, the what problem else was is I going to mention? It doesn't, Sorry, I just don't think it creates meaningful death. I think it just creates frustrating deaths. Yeah, 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 and that's that's true. Like, meaningful a, deaths could be down. fun. Yeah, and it all it all the comes actual down to, death isn't like, fun, but yeah, comes down to like the economy, right? Like, well, if the only inconvenience of dying now is that you're gonna have to walk out like you know fifty feet over to the store and buy an armor set and a weapon and some med pens every time, and you know, it's it's that's not like a big deal. Like these armor sets, I've I bought the same armor set two years ago, and I've never cared about it since. So yeah, so be it. Like, and I've you know, being a PvP, I've kind of been dealing with the inconvenience of death for a while now, like a year now. Like you die, you go to prison, and that's a huge inconvenience because you got to figure out your way out. You got to organize to get out. It's kind of yeah, like the people that have been going to prison as their gameplay loop. You know, they've been dealing with this already. Like, the the players, like, that aren't on the wrong side of the law, you know, they are going to now be calling for medical aid when they get downed. Well, I have to call for someone to get me out of prison every time now. Anyway, yeah. I've had it, to do that for, like, a year It kind of brings balance. Now. Yeah, so, you know, it's not, it's not that unbearable for me. Like, I, we don't mind. It's not that big a deal. Um, and, no, I'm for it. I think it's good. Um, I don't think it's too early. I think it's always too early. So why don't why not just do it now? Yeah. Um, the looting is obviously like a huge tick. I don't have much to say. Like that's just it's just super good. Um, yeah, it's great mechanic. I, think... I obviously it's the standard mechanic that should be in any game, uh, MMO things like that. It's just yep. we we don't exactly know what is going to be in the containers and how good it will be and how much change they're going to bring. Like you mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. what is in the patch notes and what is not and uh, what they're willing to talk about on video and what is not. So it's yeah. hard to talk much about that uh, besides mm -hmm. like, could be cool. We'll see. Yeah. I, and I remember thinking like, oh, it's just going to be like looting weapons. Cause you can do that already right now. Like someone dies, you can pick the weapon off the body. Um, it's literally it what they hands. showed in the video. And then the guy yeah, with the box I of weapons, I'm just like, oh, God, no, oh, I know when, when I saw no. like the little the little loot packages in bunkers, I'm like, if this is looting, like, oh God. Yeah. So it's good. It's good that they kind of rectified that it's better than that, right? Because I remember- Have they? We were all in. Yeah, 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 for sure. You you, you, you can definitely loot a body. Like I, they mentioned that in the video. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if that goes down to like looting helmets as well, or if it's just like weapons and, you know, stuff on them or yeah, whatever. Um, and does it mean that, no, nah, actually they, they definitely wouldn't be doing that. But, um, I think one big win about all of this is too, is like when everyone connects to a server, a 50 man server, unless there's a dynamic event, there's no reason to interact. And like, I harp on the economy being so bad that like, you know, without an economy, there's no trading 
which means there's no security, which means there's no piracy, there's no policing, um, you know, there's no trade routes, there's no boarding ships, all that stuff. Like, t economy and trading for me is like the big thing that ties everything together. And I think that the fact that you could broadcast medical beacons when you get downed is is a good mechanic to have because it's actually going to bring players that don't know each other together. And there's like no loops that do that outside of these dynamic events. So, you know, the interactions like that are going to happen with, <laughs> does the guy that's, you know, picking up your medical mission, you broadcast it, decide to rob you instead because you've got an, a rare helmet? Or does he follow through? You know, like, or is the people that are doing the beacon, are they setting up a trap for the, the guy coming in the re Cutlass Red and they're going to kill him or are they going to pirate him and take his stuff? You know, player interaction, um, you know, through missions and stuff like that is just always a good thing. And I think um, I think that's a big tick. But for me, yeah, it's just, it's going to be about what's not not in the patch notes. Yeah. But as far as the big features... A thumbs up. I think it's yeah, it's it's just time. It's time we start getting closer yeah. for me, and you know that's that's really all I've got to say on it. Um, what about the wipe? I know you wanted to was... talk about that. Yeah. Look, a wipe. Okay, no matter what, a wipe helps. Like, even though the economy is not in a good shape, a wipe, uh, and I mean that in the sense that like. You know, if every if they do a wipe, not everybody goes to start trading. Um, people are just going to do NPC missions at random parts and not interact with each other and stuff like that. Yeah, but no matter just, what. Hold on, can I interrupt you for one yeah. second? I just want to make it clear: yeah. there's no official wipe. Nothing has been said by CIG. I just am under the assumption that there is no way that there is possibly not a wipe in this patch because the way our inventories worked in 314 versus the way our inventories work in 315, I feel like the only resolution to that is to wipe everything that you have because the items in your inventory are supposed to be stored in a local place. But if they're in this global void, how does that work? I, I just, I'm just assuming that there's going to be some form of a wipe. I don't know if it means wipe all your money. I don't know if it means wipe all the ships you've purchased. I don't know what it means, but it, it, I don't see it not happening. So go ahead, Virgil. I'm sorry. No, you're right. You're right. It should be clear. But yeah, like I think no matter what, a wipe's going to help. Now, I know there's like, if it's, if you go on Spectrum, it's 50-50 down the middle. Like yeah. half the community wants the wipe, the other half doesn't. Like, and it's it really feels like it's even. And I'm measuring that like upvotes against Picard's. Um, but <laughs> like... It's really, it's it's real. It's a pretty heated debate in there when you go to these topics. But I, I just think it's like it's got to be time. Like everyone has all these ships. There's all these YouTube videos circulating how to make infinite UEC. Um, you know, trading and all that stuff. It's it's no one's doing it. No one's working towards ships. No one's working towards components. Um, and the only UEC sync we're gonna have next patch is gonna be armor sets. And so, which means like you're gonna have to pay like 20k UEC to get out of a death if you die and lose your stuff. You're probably gonna average around spending 20k to get it back. Um, so no, I think I, it would be nice to play the game again. But he, like, here's the thing, right? If if they revisit trading, meaning like you know, Jump Town actually is worth doing. Um, trading in general is worth doing. Those the random um, price commodity updates in your data pad that you get. Um, hit up with on your journal if that becomes worth doing mm -hmm. on top of a wipe like then this patch is gonna be so good like ridiculously good i think and you're I, on copium dude <laughs> I, I think i've you're been on, on copium the last copium. two patches i think you're on such i, I copium. have been i don't think <laughs> like i i'm so far gone that i don't think anything is gonna be good and then if it is, I'm surprised, but I've just been, I've been here, here a lot longer than three years to know that yeah. there, there's so many underlying issues with the game. And like, the only way that things are going to be good is if things actually have meaning and there, and there's reasons to work towards stuff. Like, yeah, I, I don't, mean, underst and, and I don't understand how it's going to be so good. Or, or earning things right. from a mission or whatever, right? Yeah. Like it. it I yeah. think the game needs a lot more time 
and to implement the the stuff that we're starting to z see with the yep. Xeno Thread event and the armor, right? Like applying yep. that to more stuff is yep. massively important. There was a little hint in Twitch chat that you know one of the things is is uh, your home system. I said, why would you ever choose R Corp or Microtech as your home system? Never. Why would you? There's no missions there. There's nothing to do there. And there was an implication that that might have be changing. So, uh, you know, that's like a little um, bit of information that it's like nice to have some of the devs in your in your chat sometimes because they were they just spam the NDA amount of mine after. And it was like a, maybe that's implying that something might be changing. So that's like one of the things that probably won't be in the patch notes that you'll see in uh, 315. So I don't know. Before you and go ahead, go, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's it. I, I I'm done. I was gonna say before you and me wrap up, like what would you need to see, like within reason, for this patch to to be good enough for you? Oh, dude, I think I think it's like upbeat. a year probably of looking at. Uh, I I don't want to see this happen, but I think it's inevitable. I think they have to take most of the items out of the shops. And just have like basic civilian stuff, and then uh, you want the armor. You got to go do the mission for it, kind of stuff. Yeah, or have the reputation to be able to go yep. to cer a certain shop. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's too gamified then or too much, because I know a lot of yep. people don't want to grind forever to get certain things. But I'm sorry, a, a military grade component should not be just purchased by. Um, a player who just joined the game and bought a bunch so of you need like, like like how about this? How about this, dude? Rarity and items, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm that's what I'm looking yep. for because then then all of the things that you say are gonna make the patch so good for me yep. doesn't make it mean anything at all. Uh huh. Right? Like there being yeah. medical gameplay and you dying. Well. If, if I go into a down state and I'm playing by myself, or even if I'm playing with other people, it still just yeah. might be, it comes down to instead of, I need to keep these items that I earned, it goes, yep. it goes from that to the logic of what is faster for me to get back and doing what I was doing before. Mm -hmm. That's where, that's where my thought process would go instead of, I don't want to lose this stuff. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna care like, whether I lose my stuff right now. Yep. And there's like two like there's two ways you do that with a game, right? It's like either you have um like rarity and items and like meaningful progression, meaning like, you know, these weapon components that are military grade are considerably harder to earn. Yeah. Or you go the other route, which is everything has got like a standard price or whatever but you you have as much outgoing as you've got incoming meaning like you know you lose a ship you lose the components so you're constantly doing maintenance on your wallet to keep you know above water or you've got the the meaningful progression which is the hard to earn gear and stuff like that and i'm i'm fine either route you know like i, th I think there needs um, to be some level of of combination of the two like where mm -hmm. the and I don't think it's like that. I don't think they're really clear on where it's going with that. No, which they? is why we're we're giving opinions yep. and not stating facts. Unfortunately, um, yep. it's just too far away to be completely developed for them to, to start discussing with us. What, what with them being comfortable discussing their their long term plans, I feel like I think they've shared with us different. You know, this comes down to like insurance and everything, and it's being an alpha and all that stuff. Um, you know, if they're doing it with the character, I hope they eventually do it with the ship. But if you die, for me personally, if you die in a safe place, maybe you shouldn't lose anything unless, you know, it's your actual character, then you have to fly over there. But I guess I'm talking more about ship components and insurance and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then if you do die out in like pyro, then yeah, you should probably lose your ship components, right? It's the risk versus yep. reward that I'm looking for in the game. There needs to be a reward and then there needs to be the risk. So what creates risk? And what creates reward is what I need to be in the, into the game. The the things that are coming into 315 create the, the mechanics and the ability to create risk and reward. And that's what I think is exciting. Do I think 315 will be fun? No. Because there is still is no risk and there still is no reward. 
That makes sense? Yeah, because the armor and weapons isn't enough, is it? Like, you're not losing enough. The, um, the armor and weapons are, are not significantly different or create yep. a, a significant enough of a change to your game experience based off of what you purchase that I feel like yeah. it's worth it. And the only components or things that you can buy that do significantly change are maybe ship shields, ship uh, quantum drives, and possibly weapons at some point in the future, but not even anymore because of the changes uh, to, you know, the balancing and everything. So, and you can't lose those things. But if you look at just the character, what are the things that you bring with you? Water, medical pens. That's it. Yep. Armor. And none of those things are significantly different from each other. None of those things are expensive. None of those things required you to earn them. Blah, 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 yep. blah. Right? Yeah. Yep, and I don't think you're gonna be like, um, like people are gonna have just so much in their accounts that it's just the, you know, you have to you die, you go clean up in the the shop for the next two minutes, and then you're back out the door. It's not um, even that. And then it's not gonna feel immediately like uh, after a week. You know, people aren't gonna be even bothering to loot bodies, right? Because they're not bringing anything. Yeah, rare or powerful to the table. So exactly, yeah, I get you. And we've been on, we've been on call for a while, so I'd like to end it here. Yeah. But this is what I want to end it with. If you guys think things are going to be really frustrating when you die and you don't want to lose your stuff, you got to pay attention to everything. Physicalized inventory, guys. When you die, you either go to a hospital, or you go to your home location, or you go to your ship. Okay. Your physicalized inventory, what you're probably going to be doing, and the meta, I guess, would be everything that you normally take out with yourself, your armor, your weapons, your med pens, your food, your water, is all going to be stored in your physical hangar. When you die, you're going to take your little elevator to your hangar, you're going to go get your stuff, <clears throat> and you're just going to go right back out. It like the actual time commitment is not flying to all the different locations and buying up everything every time you die. It's literally just going to be going to your inventory, restocking, and going back out. So you got to remember that part. It's not the same loop that we currently have in Star Citizen. That loop has changed. You go out, you stock, and then now you actually have a home that you restock at. So keep that in mind as well. Yep. Yep. Right? Uh, no, I think, I again, before we go, I think that this is something I really want to touch on, too. I saw somebody type in, in chat that you can't please everybody. And sometimes when you make s certain systems in the game, they're going to appeal to certain players of your community and not appeal to others. And I think it does come down to the 50-50 splits and the I don't think the medical gameplay is going to be fun from, uh, I don't want to say casual, but I guess I don't know how to use another word. Uh, what other word to use is like the more casual side of the community. They're seeming to be kind of frustrated with this too bad. Like there's some things that are for you and there's some things that are not for you. And I think these are some things that are for the less casual players, the people that want risk and reward. They have to create those elements of the game for them as well. And you need to respect that. I respect your sunsets. I respect your, your, um, you're flying around with your friends and your 890 jump and your RPing. Um, I think that there should be safe places for you to do that where people like Virgil can't come and fuck up the, uh, the Damar rally, things like that. Right. I absolutely believe that those should be things. I think Virgil, I think there should be places where you can do stuff like that. Right. But yeah. I think that there should be different places for, for, for different things. So I absolutely respect everybody, but they need to respect the fact that there needs to be stuff for us as well. You know, yep. and and uh, I don't know if and that's it was always like on the agenda rude to, right? to like call you out for coming. that or, or anything. I don't I, I don't feel it was. You're I think right. it's like it's very obvious that you've you jumped the Damar rally before and it was like a big thing and whatever. Right. Um, the I, I just think that the game isn't there. And, and just as much as you say it's an alpha to me when I think that these mechanics should be in the game, I'll say it's an alpha to you when these mm -hmm. mechanics come in and they're going to be frustrating. Deal with it. Yep. Just like you tell me I have to and, deal with things. And it's and it was all like this was always coming, right? Like this was always part of the original dream. You know, yep. like if you've been playing Star Citizen thinking this wasn't coming, then you probably weren't doing enough research into the game you were investing in. Because yeah. it's gonna yeah. it's gonna keep doing going in this direction and probably get worse, you know.
But if, it, at the same uh, tone, it hopefully does also go in the other direction for players who just want to hang out. Yeah, they have, for they sure. have to provide so those I'm spaces. I'm just strictly as well. talking about the losing equipment, like Death of a Spaceman stuff. Of course. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and and one more thing I just want to touch on too is like you know with the the law system and stuff like if a player kills you, the game can differentiate that it was a player and you know not an NPC or you know when your ship. Um, if you're out in space in the server 30Ks, the ship can differ uh, the ship terminal can differentiate a ship in an unknown state and then a ship that was destroyed by like an NPC or something. So, you know, I just think that maybe, you know, people shouldn't assume that you're going to lose your gear at every opportunity. Maybe there yeah. is systems in there where you're actually going to keep your gear and it can tell that you had to, you know, suicide as an un like as a method of un getting yourself um, unstuck out of a, a location or something, you know, it might, it might go smoother than you think. That's yeah. all. But GG's, I think we covered it all. True. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Later. Bye bye now. All right. Our next caller is Tiz. I actually have to bring your name up here, Tiz. So I'll uh, leave it blank for a moment. What's up, dude? How you doing? Hey man. A uh, long time. How's everything? Yeah. I've been on a, uh... In rehab, so to say. SC uh, rehab. SC rehab. But I've, uh, <laughs> I've I... been back like uh, since 3.13. Yeah. Okay. It's been okay, yeah. Um, What do you think about 3.15? Where do you want... We've obviously touched on a lot of topics today. Where do you want to start? Uh, the floor is kind of yours here. So maybe just with the title. And uh, for me... Um, I think it doesn't really matter uh, most of the time what's in the patch, but more in what state the patch is going to be released. Okay. And I had like different patches that were really great. And um, I mean, really great still in Star Citizen perspectives. Yeah. And that I had fun because it was stable and um, like I could QT without turning 360 degrees every time it did a QT <laughs> for me. True. And and then sometimes it's 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 not good. So that's going to be my major, yeah, deciding factor whether it's going to be frustrating or not. Not not necessarily if I if I die and leave my stuff behind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what and, about uh, from the, what maybe, about on the medical side of things? Yeah. So I I don't understand people who say it's not the right time. I mean, it has to be the right time now. I don't want to wait another nine years and I'm really, I really want them to implement it. Like they implemented prisons. I also really had a hard time with prisons at the start and I thought of, oh, fuck, I can't brief anymore. And then I have to spend four hours in prison. And I think prison is a good, a good example. I mean, I know it had box, but it changed the game and I don't think it necessarily changed the game to a bad place. And I can imagine that it's going to be the same with uh, medical gameplay and dying and the down state. I think at the moment we can't really see how it's going to ultimately affect gameplay and what it's going to create, but it's going to ch change it. And um, I like not playing the stale same Star Citizen patch for like two years. So I'm excited for it to change in whatever direction it's going to change. Yep. Yeah. I, I think you make a really, really good point that not I don't think anybody's made yet is, I mean, the comparison to prison we made so far, but the idea of its implementation being rough and finding the outliers and dealing with the law system and all those things that have happened with prison, uh, how, how do they find all those things as quickly without just jamming it in, allowing us to deal with it? And seeing what happens and how we play it and see all the issues. And like this, this is one of those situations where when they talk about how being in the, the state that Star Citizen is in and being able to gather feedback and all that stuff, it, it is an advantage. And it does seem like the, the, the people who argue it's an alpha, it's not time, it, I think are, are doing a disservice to the game altogether. It should just be throw it all in, see how we deal with it, see how things interact with each other and and uh, deal with the outliers and fix it and build it from there. I, I just never understood not doing that. Yeah, and I think um, 
it's going to be a rough implementation. And I think um, uh, virtual is on pure copium when he thinks that at the beginning it's going to differentiate the reason why you died and if it was a bug or not. And you're going to be able to keep the stuff it, if it was a bug. I think that's not going to happen now, but maybe it's going to happen in three patches. And if you implement medical gameplay in, in one year, then you're going to have the changes in two years that maybe it's going to be okay. So I'm I don't think he's on copium in, in that sense. Like they've, they've showed their like, uh, these missions completed, these missions don't. So we have to look and see if there's a bug. I think they absolutely know if another player kills another player. They have tons of statistics that they gather from the game. Uh, it's just whether or not they utilize it or do anything with it. Tis. So I think they have the metrics. I think he might be on copium of whether or not they do anything with it. Yeah, that was that was my point. Okay, I, okay, I agree that sure. they can differentiate. Yeah. Okay. And maybe just I, I think we didn't touch on the medical gameplay itself as much. No. So uh, with the different tiering system, mm -hmm. and maybe I just want to uh, give my two cents about this. Please. So when I saw the last ISC uh, with the um, also with the medical scanner where they where it showed your injuries, mm -hmm. I was kind of torn because on the one hand I'm I'm really glad that they gamified it a lot. I think it would have been a mistake to say you have a femur fracture. The femur fracture is in three different parts and you have four different screws and which screws do you take now to fix the femur fracture right? so you're going to have different tiering gamified and the worst you can't walk anymore um that's fine for me but then it's kind of it gets mixed because now you have 20 different medical injections you can do for anesthesia for painkillers for whatever um, so I'm not really seeing a clear direction what they actually want. The other thing is also that you still use the MediPen, but the MediPen sort of completely separate from the rest just fills up your HP. So you can have, I, I'm not sure if the, I understood this correctly, but you can have 100 HP or 100% HP, but your leg is shattered or you have a great... I can Sweet. help explain it if if you want. Do you, I? I think I have a really good analogy. Have you played Daisy or Escape from Tarkov? Yeah. Okay. So the med pen are the regular med pen is bandages. The anesthesia are painkillers. The you know something else is like uh, food that gives you more stamina or something, right? Or. Uh, it, it, I think they went in a weird way where each different part of your body is uh, creates different symptoms and then each med pen cures each symptom for each part of the body, which I thought was really stupid. And I also think it's really stupid to have every single one of them be a different medical pen with a different color. I think other games like Daisy do it really well where there's um, if you get sick, you drink, you, you consume charcoal or vitamins or whatever, right? They're very different things that are very clear what they do. Where the med pens, it's like you have to read the name in the description and then then you memorize the colors and it's less clear what the actual thing does. And like the fact that you were even a, re remotely confused is, pr prob I think, is problematic already. Yeah, I think I get the idea of you having an injury and then you have a specific or a, or a disease or a debuff where you have a specific counter to it. I okay. think that's not um, a bad thing in itself. I just found it weird that you could have 100% HP and, and still your leg is shot and your torso is shot, you know. Okay. You sort of, that it's completely, completely disconnected from your injury, your HP pool, right? I think, I think you're making assumptions without us knowing that you would be at 100 HP, but um, not be at 100 HP. So the, the one thing that I heard him say is that the medical pens will, or and probably the medical um, attachment for the multi-tool, will heal you up as high as you can be given your injuries. 
So he did say that specifically. So I do not think you will be at 100% health using the medical pen. And the only other thing that would exist is the symptoms. So max, ma your max HP would be lowered based off of your injuries. But we don't know for sure until we actually have it in our hands. But he said that exactly. I, I'm speaking word for word. Okay. Yeah, then it's fine. I, okay. I think it's uh, it's okay if we just... We'll see when we'll see, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that's that's okay. I, I'm just, yeah. I'm also a bit um, confused about their recent change, right, from, with the tiering. Mm -hmm. So am I suspected to, um, or am I uh, am I to believe that this is now the final way we grade injuries or have injuries because they're releasing it complete? Or is this still the old it's still one? Where zero. In a... It could change. I, I, I think... A, a light, medium, and heavy injury is pretty standard. What would you, what what are you trying to get at here with this? I guess. No, I'm just wondering whether it's going to evolve still because uh, I think uh, in the SCL, it did a few or a, a week or two ago where they tried to um, tell us that they're shifting again. Um, um, he said something about delivering a, uh, 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 a feature that is tier zero because it only has a couple of features mm -hmm. and not the whole feature set of, uh, of, for example, injuries, right? But that the things that they are delivering will be the the final idea or a final thing that they're trying to do, right? Well, I think if if I'm just going to make some assumptions and put my opinions in, I would say that the idea that there's three tiers of injuries and each injury comes with certain um, symptoms and then there are ways to um, mask those symptoms and then there you have to go to a hospital to cure them, I think is probably their, their idea of what the gameplay is. The balance and the adding more injuries – Adding the way that, like, different ways that you get the injuries and balancing how often you get to the the highest tier of injury and those things, I think, would be what they iterate on rather than the general mechanic. Um, I don't see a way to, to make it any more detailed without going into the, that, like, what you talked about in the very beginning with, like, oh, okay, I have a broken bone. I have to put these screws here to, to stabilize, you know, that kind of stuff would be silly. And I'm just wondering how people that really looked forward to being a medic, right, or a, mm. or a first responder are going to react to this. Because right now, with the system they have and the system I see, I don't really see oh, a lot of need to have somebody that's really good at healing, right? Because everybody seems to be able to do it. Right? Okay, let me ask you a question then. What games that don't have skill, like, sorry, uh, what games that don't have skills, like more sim-like games, uh, what, what, or even like your general, uh, I don't know, like a Battlefield game that has a class, what, what type of gameplay does does the medic have there so people who play medics and do these things in other games what are their experiences because i don't see them having these crazy uh detailed i have to get good at x y and z things i think that they just enjoy supporting the group and having a role and being important I agree, but usually, I, I mean, with Battlefield for, or any of those types of games where you basically try to throw a health pack at uh, <laughs> at, at your guy and then he heals up or the other guy, well, I, I'm, I haven't played one of those for a while. Mm -hmm. But um, usually the, the, the reason why you're the medic is because you spawn with the health pack, right? But in Star Citizen, everybody can go and buy a, a healing gun, so... I think they need to do more for it to to differentiate the kind of the class, but I think that's yeah, maybe a bit too far. I don't know. I think you're right, but I also think that they're the idea behind limiting what sort of the amount of inventory you have is what could start defining what role you choose because you can't have everything on you. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I didn't you know, think about that. Yeah. But but at the same time, it, it I don't know if it significant. Like, I mean, you can have a medical tool 
okay, let's let's go here. I think the multi tool is one of like the examples of how this may not work that well. Is that you have the multi tool, but then you can keep a few attachments inside your uh, backpack and then utilize and be kind of a catch all in some scenarios. But yeah, it's um, I think. I'm right to an extent, but at, at the same time, I think you are as well, is that the game does not and has not uh, expressed too much of like, I am the medic and, and, and I can get good at it because there's no mini game that I'm aware of like mining or uh, mining <laughs> at the moment that will make it uh, have some level of skill, right? That we know of. Yeah. So but, um, we'll yeah, that, yeah. I think that's all for me because I want to Craig as an at ASM comment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, Tiz. Well, we'll let you go, okay. man. See you. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too. Bye bye. All right, and our next caller is Jerry Philbane. Jerry, what's up, man? Hey, is what's going on? Can you can you actually hear me? I hear you just great, dude. How you doing? Uh, good man. Hey, uh, I was listening to the, the the stream just now, and I guess I was a few minutes back. So you were still in the middle of talking to the last caller, and I was like, "Oh, oh, I'm on." Yeah. Um, hey. Yeah. What do you want to start with? Obviously, the topic has been somewhat broad today. What uh, what do you want to start with? Uh, well, first I just want to say that this is my first time calling in, and I'm a huge fan of your show, man. Thanks, dude. I, I appreciate that very much. It means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, I, I there's so much stuff that you guys covered already, but my my first initial thoughts on the last ISC, I I think it was kind of like my my version of what you were talking about with the with the looting. I was yeah. I was saddened. I okay. was I, I felt bad when I saw it. Why? Yeah. Well, it's not, this is the thing with them. It's not that I think that the system's going to be bad. And I, I've been waiting for medical gameplay or just death of a spaceman since I heard about it. Yeah. You know, like I've been waiting since the beginning. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I think it's a CIG issue, man. I feel like they just, they, it's the way that they take their time giving us information on this stuff that like now that I got this information, I just felt like underwhelmed in a way from okay. the way they build it up. If that makes sense. Sure. I I just like, I yeah. think they, from day one, they set the expectations so high that they can't meet them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. And that's how I feel about this too. Yeah. Like I, I have almost no issues with, the the medical stuff i think it all makes perfect sense i think the only issue that i i brought yeah. up that i really think should change is the idea of uh, medical pens just being different colors i think is really fucking lazy for... I, I was hearing you say that yeah. i was laughing when you said that that's actually a really good point i think it's just kind of like uh like for now maybe that's part of the zero implementation or whatever yep. but it's just like right now the ui just seeing like 10 pens and you're like i i thought that i guess i'll go, use the purple like one that. for this it, it, i'm sorry <laughs> like the best damn space sim ever w wouldn't do that right but at the same yeah. time the best damn space sim ever if they're going to have all these different things then it qu requires all these different animations and sounds yeah. and this and art and it all has yeah. to be perfect and it all has to be star citizen so if they were going to go in that direction yeah. it would take 10 times longer than any other game would because uh, a game like daisy would have just the different item that's in your hand and you would have the same stupid eating animation that you do for everything else right and you can't yep do it to other like there's no animation necessarily when you do it to other people that's different so that's the that's the thing about star citizen is you have you can go this way or you can wait 10 years so i'd rather not wait 10 years but it also yep feels lazy and and uh they set the expectations where i think you should do better a hundred percent yeah i mean i've had some time in between like the isc and now to kind of like get a grip on it uh -huh. but when i first when i first saw it i was i was raging a bit because it was just it felt like 
I'm waiting, you know, six months they've been talking or even a year. How long have they been talking about this mechanic? And then it's just, it's kind of like Tarkov in space. And I'm, I'm like, well, all right, I'm fine with Tarkov in space, but why are you telling me, why does it take you this long to just tell me that that's the plan? Yeah. You know, like that's, that's where I feel like, but like, as far as the gameplay is concerned, I'm like, it's going to be good for the game. And it's like, you're saying, it's like, I would rather have it in now in the form that it's in and have them maybe possibly go back and mess with it later than to sit around and wait six years to get something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I'd rather have it in and, and build off of it. It's just a matter of building off of it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, I did have, I did have some gripes though about the mechanic itself. And this was one I thought about. I didn't see many people talking about it was the medical bed itself. To me, it's like, why are we laying down in the bed and actually like interacting with the screen when isn't the thing just going to heal us up like to whatever level we have to heal up to? It just feels like I'm just needlessly clicking like, okay, yes, you can heal my leg. Like I'm not going to decide I don't want you to heal my body parts, you know? Uh, well, they, ha they have, I, I think there might be something in the future too. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I think you, you, like you have, you gave Tarkov as an example, right? So yeah. when, when you're in a raid in Tarkov, the, there is no way to cure the major injury of a blacked out. I guess you can cure the, the major injury of a blacked out arm, but at the same time, mm -hmm. the, the health of that arm, let's say is lowered after you use one of the surgery kits, right? right? The only way to go back to full health is to leave the raid and click a button yes. and it instantly happens. This game, you don't do that. So there needs to be a reset and there need, it needs to work. It needs to have lore. It needs to make sense. Sure. A hospital would be that, right? So as yeah. weird as that seems, put it into perspective with what other games do. You have DayZ where... I broke my leg. I tie a stick and some rope together and I magically have no longer a broken leg or you could be do something more realistic like what Tarkov does, except Tarkov has loading screens and Tarkov has single instance raids that you leave and then you go into a new one. This game doesn't. Right. So what can they do? It seemed the logical thing would be hospitals, right? No, no, I'm not. My, my problem isn't the hospital itself or even oh. the medical bed themselves. Okay. No, I'm saying that the, the issue that I, or what I saw as being kind of weird is that, you know, when you lay down, you get that panel that goes in your face and sure. then you use the inner thought on it. I was just kind of thinking like, they haven't shown us anything else as to like, maybe you have to put a certain amount of drugs in it and it has to be like, powered a certain way mm. but like why not just make it so i lay on the bed and it heals me automatically like why am i interacting with this screen i felt like that would make more sense like if a medical doctor was interacting with the screen for you or and, and you know like because that, cr watched the expanse expecting. dude that's why because cr yeah. watched the fucking <laughs> expanse that's literally they, why there's man, no dude. doubt about it 100 yeah. percent they, I'm surprised yeah. we don't put our arm in a circle and it heals us. I'm a hundred percent surprised they didn't I steal don't know it. Why. They, uh, may, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe because it it makes it easier to have the screen in front of you, you know. Yeah. But I think maybe. that's a hundred percent yeah. why. Because, like for me, I agree with you. Why wouldn't yeah. we go to a hospital and then you lie in the bed and the doctor comes up to you, there's a bunch of voice lines and animations, and he says, don't worry, we're going to take good care of you, and all that stuff. Like, if you've ever had surgery, I, I'm i scared as... Uh, I'm super scared of going under uh, the knife, or, or yeah. just, like, under, right? And, like, where you where you get knocked out. So the, the that whole moment, you know, would be like, oh, my God, that would give me so much anxiety. So the... Yeah. But, you know, that kind of thing... Uh, would be interesting. Yeah. It just felt like but, yeah. yeah. It just felt like an unnecessary step to me. That one extra step of like I look at a panel and I click it. If because it's not it's not like it only heals you with the drugs that you put in the machine. That's not what they showed us. It yeah. just it just whatever oh, no, you're yes. at. If you're at a tier three bed, it heals you all the way up anyway. It's literally. But that, the I mean, it's a minute detail, I guess. It's not the biggest deal, but that was one of the only 
real problems I had. It was just the presentation. I was raving about it the other day, man. So I'm kind of still coming down from that. Yeah. But, just think um, the expanse and you'll it'll be okay. They do it I'll, there. Yeah. Um <laughs> uh, yeah, what else? That yeah, that was that was it. I'm I'm working right now. I'm like I'm in between. <laughs> I just really wanted to come on and say say what's up to you, man. I said, yeah, I've been uh, listening well, I, to you since yeah, I'm sorry. a couple years now. I'm sorry we kept you on hold for so long then. I I appreciate you waiting. No, that's all right. I know I'm my job. I'm I'm like I'm like real life Kovalex, man. I I drive, so Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm good. All right. Well, stay yeah. safe on the road then, Jerry. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'd like to call it again. This is uh this has been cool. I I don't really know like if there was anything else that, you know, you guys have talked about a lot of stuff that I was you know i was thinking about already and i think you guys touched on a lot already yeah. so yeah yeah well all right buddy it was great ca- talking to you i'm glad you appreciate the show and i hope to hear from you again soon absolutely man Yo, all right, take buddy. care take care bye now See all right and our next caller is asn asn what's up dude asn you there afk there maybe hello All right, we're going to put ASN up, and we're going to bring Meyer in. Meyer, can you hear me? What if? Uh, oh, there he is. Okay, I was going to say, what did Discord just die on me or something? Hey, Meyer, what's up? Uh, not much, buddy. How's it going? Good. Um, yeah, so I'm sure you've seen the ISC. I'm sure you've seen the SEL back in a, f- a few weeks ago. What do you think about all this? Is it going to be fun? Um, Is it going to be fun? I don't know, man. I mean, like, it's going to be fun to certain people, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, obviously, there's some people who have heard about medical gameplay, and instantly they're, like, uh, their alarm bells are ringing because they know it's going to be an extra hurdle to their gameplay. But um, I don't necessarily think it's going to be that way. Like, if you don't want to participate this early on into medical gameplay... Then you know, like if you've broken a leg or or you've died, just backspace, right? Yeah. But let's say you're playing with friends and you're mining, or you're playing with friends and you're going to a bunker mission or something like that. You do one of the new missions, right? Like uh, you go in there and hold down the territory or whatever, and your friend gets taken down. Now you don't need to fly all the way back from wherever the heck you were just to rejoin in the combat and that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think at that level, it's a benefit, you know huge benefit i i can't believe nobody brought that up including myself at this point like when playing with friends when that one person deals with that stupid bug it's a huge quality of life improvement right yeah like remember like when i I don't know exactly how um backspace is going to work into it and if backspace is going to magically become part of like the in-game, like, uh, medical lore. Like, what happens when you backspace? It's just, like, you know, massive head trauma or whatever. Like, imagine, like, uh, I don't know, like, it's still gonna, like, happen if you have, like, a troll in your party. I, you know, like, uh, Linus and Morphology just came to mind with, like, you know, Linus yeah. backspacing and having to make them go all the way back just to get him, right? Like, if he did that, they'd just bring him back up and they'd continue playing the game, you know? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> or they would just leave him there true true <laughs> <laughs> no i mean that's like a huge point that is i think makes the fun versus frustrating lean so much further to fun right um, to me it's the only benefit of medical gameplay really i mean yeah. like yeah it's cool to see all the things like in their earliest um you know things but you know unfortunately with star citizen we're still in this you know things are more complex now and it's more than just you know menus changing but we're still mm-hmm. very much in the building blocks phase of the actual pieces that will make the game right yeah. yeah absolutely and i think you're right like it's one of the only benefits because the point of medical ba- gameplay is to create uh i guess blocks and more well, I mean roadblocks in a way I guess right I mean I wouldn't even say like roadblocks per se right like it's what's the difference between like you know being shot and then you die and then being shot and then like you have all these things that mask the pain as it were until you go back yeah. to base right 
So if, if anything, like if you are more prepared or if you have somebody out there to you know help you, then you'll be able to continue playing the game longer and doing what you want to do longer. I do feel like the game has an issue where like, let's say, oh, okay, I've, I've finished with work. I want to play Star Citizen. I want to do this. You know, mm -hmm. the game then goes, no, uh, fuck you. You're doing this instead. You know, like if you have a crime stat, you have to then spend two hours, you know, going into like, uh, you know, hacking your crime stat. Somebody else can come and shoot you and then you go to jail. And then there's a one hour and a half gameplay loop of then having to hack your crime stat to be, get back into what you wanted to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, with medical gameplay, I, I feel like it's um, a step in the other direction, to be fair. Like, if you are prepared, you know, like uh, with the drugs that like mask the damage and then you then have to then go to um, get it fixed. Okay. Um, yeah, like, yeah. I guess when I said roadblocks, I guess I said it kind of silly. The, the, the roadblocks were always there. Now they're creating mm. the detours around them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, that it's definitely I, I'm glad you you had this point of view on it because I feel like I thought it was going to create more frustration and and then it then it may actually do. So yeah, I, I appreciate your your point of view here a lot. <laughs> it, <laughs> Thank it, you. It, yeah, definitely. I I'm such a glass half empty person, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like your experience, though. I mean, like it's not—it's not for nothing, you know. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's—it's it's built on experience. But um, yeah, with uh, with medical gameplay, I feel like it's if if it's implemented the way I hope it's going to be, it's it should add less friction when it comes to you know playing the game with friends. And then if you don't want to participate into it whatsoever then you just play the game as you normally would do um but then you of course you lose your suit and you lose your thing if you don't want to wait to be rezzed or whatever right yeah which like i've mentioned a few times is not really that big of a hurdle and even no. the fact that you could stock up and hopefully hold on to most of those things and then just you know at your hangar at your home location you just mm -hmm. restock and then you should be good yeah, I mean, it was brought up earlier, but uh, that's also coming at 3.15. And I think, like, with Star Citizen being in the state that we just mentioned, that's kind of, like, the, the biggest hurdle. Like, from making this game, like, from what it is to actually feeling more like a game, you know? Like, uh, you know, like, actually having things to work towards. You guys are talking about, like, how, um, you know, it's so easy to get credits and, like, you know, people are saying, should we wipe our credits? Should we not wipe our credits? And, like, you know, the, the community is split between it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I mean, I feel like if they were to wipe the credits, it'd be cool. But at the same time, the game isn't kind of laid out in a way where if that were to happen, that there would be any meaningful kind of, like, climb back up. Because, no. again, everything is more or less the same price. Even, like, the really overpowered guns are the same price as the really cheap ones. Exactly. These things need to be, yeah, they need to be, like, locked behind the reputation. They need to be locked behind, like, really rare finds and stuff when the loot system comes in to make the game actually something where, like, playing the game actually confers, like, you know, benefits instead of everybody just going in and, you know, like, oh, it's, what did you pledge? Oh, okay, that, now I have all this because I bought all the CWC. Yeah, like, I... Just being a content creator, and I'm sure you 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 suffer from. I I think it's actually suffering uh, from this as well. Is you always mm -hmm. I, I I at least always think of the um what would be what would make amazing content right and what would make mm -hmm. amazing content is you holy crap I found the rarest thing at uh security post Korea right but right. what makes that good content is because it it is good gameplay right. Mm -hmm. And that that like the the two absolutely go hand in hand, and um, I think people go you say those those things because you're a content creator, but I don't I what what they don't realize is what makes the good content is a good game and a good game mechanic. So. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a bit of a disconnect sometimes when people discuss uh, MMOs in general with yeah. the you know like uh, in an MMO. Right. Like there are some people out there who are like, yeah, I just want to swipe. I want to swipe my card and get the thing and whatever. And there are others who either a don't have the money or just, you know, mentally Time. speaking, it's it, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Or yeah. And they're like, uh, well, 
they don't have the money or the time or whatever like that, but they can play the game and they have the skill and they want to get this thing and there's prestige behind this item being rare, right? Yeah. And there's a reason to actually play the game. And, you know, many games kind of like fall by the wayside because like they end, they end up stop catering for the average player and they start catering for people who just want to, who are capable of swiping a card and getting the item instead. Yeah. Like I know I you're, yeah. I know you're an Asmongold fan as I am, and and I'm, you know, gonna give him full credit here. The yeah, the, dude. the the explanation that he made is like you're they they will justify the the whole thing of monetizing certain rare items or whatever or mounts or things like that because we're mm -hmm. we're going we're we're out you know we're out here for the working man and and you know that person who has no time we care about you and it's like no they don't care about you it's literally the excuse to monetize the 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 game that they put in there they don't care about you and that's not yeah. the reason why they're doing it. They're doing it for the reasons of profit and profit only. They're not doing it because they care about you. And stop saying that they are because you're dumb. And and like, you know, that that's basically what he said. And I agree with it 100%. Yeah, you know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. <laughs> yeah. But people just don't yeah. want to tell themselves that. They'll just keep huffing their copium and saying they care about me and, and I don't have time and whatever, you know? So. Yeah. But, um, you know, on, on the topic of, like, this new content and stuff coming in, I mean, like, uh, I think there was a bit of a talk about, like, Tier 0 content and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and, you know, with Rich Tyra changing strategy and stuff like that, hopefully we'll see some change in that. I, I don't know if this medical gameplay is coming off the back of this, uh, if this transition, or if this is, like, old-school stuff. Because, from what I understand, like, Tier 0 can come in two forms. Tier yeah. zero can either come in like, you know, actual agile development tier zero where it's like, oh, we need to be able to make trolleys for this thing. Okay, here are trolleys. Oh, great. Trolleys are, trolleys are here. What do they do? I don't know. And there is like, here is a feature and it's tier zero, you know, and this is a more of a disco Lando. This is a tier zero feature, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, uh, yeah. And I, yeah. So like, uh, you know, with the uh, roadmap roundup, they've pushed quite a few things back. They pushed, you know, like cutting, they pushed weapon charging, um, they pushed hacking. So hopefully that's all because these things are now being moved into that kind of like needing to have a use trajectory. Yeah. Yeah, so like, um, I'm, but I'm wondering if this medical gameplay is uh, the former or the latter. Is it like Agile Tier 0, or is it Rich Tyra's like, you know, transition into like a uh, um, Squadron 42, um, like actor status stuff transition instead? I wonder. I think it's uh, the work was being done, and what they tell us in 314 that it just needs a little more polish. And then moved mm -hmm. it to 315. I think this was prior to the change to the Squadron 42 prioritization. Otherwise, I think it would have gotten delayed. Yeah, I, I won't take too much uh, too much more of your time. But so with the ISC, we only saw the the colored drugs or whatever. Um, they didn't really talk anything about the multi tool or the cure life gun. Do yes. you think those two things are coming into this patch or no? Or is it only going to be pens? Yes. No, they mentioned them. They they just didn't didn't mention them enough. So I went back mm. and watched the S the calling all devs with Rich Tyrer, and he explained mm -hmm. that the medical attachment to the multi tool is how I understand it is it's essentially you have the medical attachment to the multi tool and you don't have to keep buying med pens. So it's basically right. a med pen, and then the cure life medical gun is all of the colored med pens combined mm -hmm. into one gun right okay but you also get the ui to be like this is an in he has an injured leg right. it's a minor it's a major it's a catastrophic or whatever the tiering system that they put in so that yeah. that's what they both have that ability one's a med pen one is all the colors one's a rainbow okay okay yep so that, that's how i understood it right and then with medical gameplay, because Star Citizen is like a, you know, like a sci-fi game and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And as a survival game, um, you know, it has survival elements to it and that kind of sure. stuff as well. 
Would you rather, like, they... You, you were talking earlier before about, you know, Tarkov and space. Would you mm -hmm. rather that they go down the route of adding things like bandages, or would you rather they go up a level when it comes to, like, uh, to, to concept, and then add m different kinds of more sci-fi survival things? Like, let's say you're going to a radioactive planet, you know, like maybe anti-cancer meds, you know, like uh, in, in the route of, you know, like Chris Roberts watching The Expanse, right? Or like, you know, maybe like, uh, I don't know, duct tape to seal your suit so it doesn't leak air or something like that. Or would you, I don't know, rather all of it. I don't know. Like, what would you did. like to see? I think they already did. I think they, I think the med pen is the bandage and the mm -hmm. op opium is the, the, whatever they call the opium thing is, is your painkillers. And it's just, mm -hmm. I don't like the way they represented it necessarily. I think they could have um, made it more unique and, and different and tactile. Like, like we expect and the, uh, the um, expectations they set for us to accept for them. Mm -hmm. But the idea of like going, to that level yeah of course i think that's where the your example of what tier zero would actually be is right the the idea of as they move on and as they add more things that can affect the actor they just have to add more um symptoms to the system mm -hmm. and more solutions to those symptoms and then obviously right. the cure would be at the hospitals which is just boom done mm-hmm so. But yeah, that's pretty much um, all, all I have to say about the matter. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I appreciate it, Meyer. And I think ASN got his mic figured out. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bring him in then. But I appreciate it, and I, I'm glad you brought your perspective to the show because I think it really changed my uh, thought process on everything. So thank you for that. That's, that's because I'm always right. Anyway, have a good one, man. <laughs> you too. Talk to you later, buddy. <laughs> Bye. Bye now. <laughs> All right, let's bring in ASN. ASN, hello. It still didn't work. Hello, ASN. Hello. It works. Welcome. Yeah. Hey Welcome. there. Yeah, thanks for having me. How's it going? Good. Uh, so I reached out to ASN because I saw him in the chat. And I don't know where you want to start, but I specifically wanted to hear your perspective on the idea of the stuck and unstuck stuff. But I'll let you okay. take the floor and wherever you want to go, the floor is yours. So, yeah, um, okay, we can start with the stuck and unstuck. Uh, I, I had two experiences in like two different games where I had that. Okay. It is... I think useful maybe in an, in an early phase where um, the game doesn't have things available to like stop people from getting stuck in the first place. Like maybe yeah. there, it's like a stopgap measure in a short period. Um, but it then seems like a feature that's is, needed like, for an alpha. Mm. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. It's it is like because I worked on one project that had it early on in the alpha mm -hmm. um, because they. They were still working on how to completely stop from people getting inside of uh, like different objects, uh, walls, or like ground in certain mm -hmm. areas. There was like these collisions that were happening, where like the mesh would break, and it was it was like a complex engine like map wide issue. So they had this like unstuck thing. Um, so it could be a, like a stopgap measure for a while, um, and that that works. But the thing is like it can introduce other exploits. So like that's the other edge of it. So how it is implemented also matters. Like if it's something that um, is like kind of smart, which is hard to do in a massive game that has different landscapes everywhere and like different, you know, geometry, um, how it would need to like be intelligent of, of its own to uh, make you unstuck in a smart way. Yeah. Um, and in a way, just uh, killing yourself would still make you unstuck. So. <laughs> That is that, but you would lose the items, which is the one thing that I think you were worried about, right? Um, not necessarily. I think it, I I'm not as worried about it, but I think a lot of the people in the Star Citizen community are going. It's too early to insert medical gameplay, and I thought to myself, what do I die yeah. from? What bugs do I die from all the time? It's usually like clipping into something, or getting stuck, or something like that is where I have to press backspace, but I don't. I didn't die very often from a random bug of just randomly dying. I, I think I mentioned there was a, a issue with like, I am dying. I'm bleeding out. I use my medical pen. Nothing happens. 
if they don't address that in the medical update, I mean, I don't know what they're doing, but the the idea of the all the other deaths you typically were like, I clipped into something, I got stuck, the I got stuck in my chair, you know, all these things. So those were typically the deaths were self self inflicted because of the the issues with the game. And if you avoid most of those by just putting an unstuck button in, then I don't think yeah, the for, community for has period. that many excuses to say it's too early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it makes sense because it's early, right? Like it doesn't yeah. make, make sense after a while. So th there is there is definitely an argument for it. Um, when it comes to overall like um, medical gameplay making stuff more frustrating, that's a very wide discussion. Like the um, the one aspect that it's it's very important that I know what you're trying to say when like there needs to be stuff that players um, get excited to. Uh, work towards and you know like have achievements of kinds of items uh, wealth like ships mm -hmm. or cosmetics or whatever you know these are very important and I do understand like you know that those make your character valuable and then losing those is a value of the game itself like losing what you've acquired like the threat of losing it the possibility sure. of like you know you might die so yeah it definitely makes sense I think the reward part is just being, you know, with the rep system and a couple other things is now being a bit more fleshed out, just a little few things here and there. At least there's some stuff that sticks around with your progress. But yeah, having now this like uh, whole thing about death, I think adds just this like one more lever for uh, designers to play around and be like, okay, here's this one more system into the game that makes it um, much more dangerous and like, like increases the threat of losing things increases the um, inter interaction between players and npcs if they can do that as well yeah i think in a, in a way it is a big step because the, the the reason why i specifically like this is um it has the capability of being basic and, and approachable for most people yes. like in, in certain ways but it has like the capability of being more detailed for those who are interested in this type of gameplay. Like it, they can, they have the systems and the mechanics in place to really go in depth with healing someone and being the healer, the medic, versus just somebody just like you know quickly patching you up and like let's keep going kind of thing. In, and in I, what I like way? Because I kind of disagree. It feels like they don't. Mm. Well, at least in in this first implementation, where do you think they would go to make it more? detail because um, like so the thing that i said was like hey it's yeah. not really like mining where there's like a mini game that you can get good at yeah, yeah and i think the this this is what they're that will do because when you look okay. at it in more detail the way they've split up the body and the where there's the way they're splitting up the items and the way they're like um adding a display on where to heal in your body you would only do these things if you had something more that you've planned like um i think in a way in the future whenever they have the resources again it will turn into like the more uh, milsim type of thing we know from Arma, where you would like triage a certain body part, you would put certain items in, and you would like wrap it up. And this is the part that gets interesting because I really like the base implementation being quiet, simple with slump, some variation, but then the ability to expand on it to provide something more interesting for like more sim players. Okay, I, um, can you go deeper into yeah. that? Because I, I wanted I asked that on I think I can't remember who I think with Tiz or somebody about the like you've played other games what what do they do in those games and we got the uh, the Call of Duty like throw a medical bag at somebody and they get healed how does how does Arma do it and you kind of went into it but just yeah go in more detail because I'm not familiar. Yeah, so basically, um, it gets inspired by real life uh, triage and like okay. medical attention. So um, when somebody's like uh, leg is uh, not completely blown away and like it, it is like in a mid state where it can be patched up, you do apply different items onto the wound mm -hmm. to like you know uh, disinfect it or to close the wound. You wrap it up, and if the person needs like a painkiller, you insert that as well. So there's okay. like three, four, five. Um, simplified steps obviously real life medic stuff is 10 times more complicated but they even like yeah it's it's yeah it is like a, a version of it in ace especially um they, they're really good in armor's ace mod yeah and um, it just the, basically requires some game knowledge of how to do it and you can go deep yeah, into it, it if, time. if you want to learn yeah and it's a role like you know when you're eight people like give a machine gunner you have an officer with the radio comms and then you have a medic and the medic's sole job is to 
like if somebody gets wounded, something bad happens, just, you know, take care of someone and get them like at least stabilized uh, before they run out of blood and stuff like that. And they, they also have mechanics like that where you can run out of blood, full on bleed out, you got to stop the bleeding, mm. stuff like that. So I think SC will have the potential to, to, to go like, you know, the tier zero, tier one thing, like they will have the potential here as well. Just like mining, as you said, when it started, it was like simpler. They're adding more variation of it, yeah. but even the start of mining was pretty good. Yeah. I think that's the interesting part, but then the tying this to death being meaningful as a first step is like exciting. Yes, it will get frustrating at the start. I got to be honest. I don't expect like this to be like, oh, it's so amazing and it's like a nice thing and like, no, it's going to be another hurdle, but the hurdle within everything makes sense. Like yeah. it will have its place. It will have its reasons. Sure. This is how I look at it. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That makes yeah. sense. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, continue. If there's anything else you want to touch on, go for it. And the uh, the part of I like I'm a person who loves death being meaningful in games anyway. Like yeah. all the tactical sims I play is like death is something that sets you back half an hour or twenty minutes, stuff like that in in certain situations. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be less depending on you know the situation. But I think it makes the time you're alive more important. But exactly. again, the key thing there is stability, right? Like if the game stability and overall polish of a game is bad. And if you can die anywhere in between, the deaths become more frustrating because it's out of your control. And that's the whole balancing game of this alpha thing that they need to, as, as much systems they're adding, they need to have as many more programmers and teams focused on polishing and maintaining stability and making sure that you know it doesn't become frustrating. Yeah. And I think that's where people are coming from where it's too early is no matter what, they don't have the resources to do that. And um, inherently putting the system in is going to cause some level of frustration. Yeah. But uh, when there's at least a glimpse of stability in like a play time, a play session, and then you actually have people on the ground and they have items on them and you're rushing to help them out. Yeah, because I don't know a cool mission is happening or something. Then it, it will become like, oh, okay, it's all working together a little bit here. You know, like I think it will insert that feel. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I, I where I'm at. Um, there are two things that I think were like big time sinks in SC is like yeah, the landing zones being on planets and like the whole like up and down thing. That's yeah. like still one of my biggest largest crimes. <laughs> Um, I mean, it just comes down think... to add persistence and you're never going to one of those mm. landing zones again, other than to heal at the hospital or to restock. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, and that's, that's like, uh, that's like a, uh, how do you say a more boring of a time waste going down and up from planets, but mm -hmm. like, at least with this wounded thing, you can even role play a little bit too. And I like that, like the, having the ability of like, I'm going to save you, like stay yeah. around. Like I'm be, I'll be there in five minutes and just rush into someone just to get him up. And, um, having consequences of dying eventually as well. So yeah. just add, it's another layer, I think, that makes the game richer is, is how I look at it. Yeah, I agree. The The last couple of callers definitely had a more positive outlook, and, and I, I definitely agree. I still think uh, the game needs to create meaning to the items in the game in order for it to feel that that heart pumping i might die here situation but um the level of quality of life improvements this actually does bring is quite quite high in comparison to what i originally thought yeah and you know as soon as you add this into the mix so players will come up and be like ah, oh, they have the death thing but it's just a hindrance like i don't care about stuff i'm losing and that's when like a live game designer would be like, okay, all right, it's time to add even more stuff that... Yeah, we need to make them it... care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, like, you add just one more, like, um, you know, um, molecule to the, to, the, to the mix, and then, like, everything, like, kind of changes in the entire, like, chemistry of, of the dynamics of the game. So, yeah. um, like, it's... Yeah, a single piece can do a lot. But, yeah, those are my thoughts on that. All right. Well, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add before we uh, call it a show? Um, no, I mean, I am actually, I haven't checked out 314. I dodged that one. Uh, dodge it. It's worth I, a dodge. Yeah, At this so point, I'm, it's worth I'm, a dodge. I'm going to hop in. 
I, I, I might just yeah go in for a 315 because this stuff excites me and it it's something that I've seen in several games uh, that I enjoyed. Being okay. a medic itself is also something I enjoy. Um, mm. It's just very team focused. Yeah. It's like supporting others instead of killing people. Yeah. Or like, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. Gotcha. I'm going to check it out. All right, ASN. Uh, we'll let you go and we'll we'll call the show. Thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate it. Appreciate your insight as always. Have a great day. You too. Have a great one. Thanks for having me. Bye bye. Thank everyone. Bye. All right, guys. That is it for today's podcast. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I'm glad I did start it early today, but I do wish um, to. I do wish to start doing them a bit later. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. Let me know uh, when and what day you would. I don't. I don't know when. When should I do them? I'm. I'm thinking of just like having a U.S. East content creator on one night and just seeing how it goes. It, like one of the things that I need to start doing more is instead of going, I don't know. I don't know how it'll work, and then create excuses for not doing anything. I think I just need to try it and see how it goes and. Um, try it a couple times and see how it goes. So maybe, uh, you know, not doing the podcast on a Sunday morning one, one week and then doing it on a Wednesday evening or, uh, something like that. And just kind of see where that takes us, um, and see what happens, you know, um, we'll have to see that, but yeah, um, that'll do it. I had a really fun time. I think we saw all sorts of different insights on this on the subject and i think everybody had really good points um but yeah some some really good highlights there so thank you so much for watching guys i hope you guys enjoyed the show if you're watching on twitch uh and you didn't catch the entire show it will be up later uh on youtube and then also if you want to ever join in on the show discord.gg slash salty mike and uh yeah if you're watching on youtube leave a comment like and for more I was going to say weeks in review. For more answer the calls, hit subscribe. And, uh, yeah, check out some of the other videos that we've had. And, again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next week, maybe. We'll have to see. Bye-bye now.